Okay, so disaccharides, very important. Uh, the monosaccharides are certainly important, but they can link together to form new compounds that have new properties. And there's three that I want you to know the structures of. Uh, basically, I want you to know which two monosaccharides are involved and what type of linkage they have to each other. So maltose, we have alpha maltose because this OH group is pointing down. It's across from the, this group. But um, it's alpha D glucose, and so this OH group is, is before it linked up, the OH group was pointing uh, down, or on, it's uh, on the, uh, the bottom of the ring, and that's why this bond is down rather than up. So alpha D glucose, so very important that alpha is for this number one carbon, tells us where that OH group is. And then just D glucose, it didn't matter whether it was alpha or, or beta, in this case uh, it was alpha because the OH group is pointing down. So if it had been a, um, a, uh, a beta D glucose, this would have been up and this would have been beta uh, maltose. And there's a, because that, uh, there's ring openings on this side, this is allowed to shift uh, open up, you can form uh, the beta uh, maltose as well. Now the linkage is an alpha linkage because it, uh, there's no alpha, the alpha beta is over here. That's, that's when we talk about alpha beta, it's uh, on this carbon one. So this carbon uh, just has an OH group that linked to it, uh, to the other uh, monosaccharide. So it's at site one and four, alpha because the OH is moving down. So it's alpha one, four linkage. So the two compounds uh, that are two uh, monosaccharides that make the disaccharide and what kind of linkage. For lactose, we have beta D galactose. You can see that OH group is up. And it's not that it's uh, you know the beta means that it's it's on the same side as the CH2OH, but the CH2OH is above because it's D. So that OH group is above, and you can see that that changes how they these uh, monosaccharides link together. Instead of having the O the O down as if they're both carrying it, like they're carrying a pail. Now this this O this bond goes up and then reaches up to this uh, the underside of this ring, this D-glucose. And I did do it in the last one, but you can certainly just draw a squiggly line here to indicate that OH might be either up or down, whether this is alpha or beta uh, D-glucose. And you can see that it doesn't matter because the bonding doesn't occur here. It occurs at this site. So because there's a uh, beta, it's an OH group is, uh, is up, and so this is a beta D-glucose, it's beta 1, and then uh, here is four. So as opposed to the alpha one, four linkage that we saw last time. So it's gotta be beta and in parentheses the one and uh, one goes to four. Then the last one is sucrose. And I got a problem I put on here, uh, left in from the last one when I use the template. So ignore that if you can see it. Describe the structure and bonding of sucrose. So we have alpha glucose and beta fructose, and see the uh, OH is, would, on its own, it would just be glucose with the OH down, and they don't specify D or L because it doesn't matter here. Uh, the OH group was down, so it linked down. The beta uh, fructose, we have the, um, um, the OH group was going up, so when they linked together, they lost, uh, water was removed, and so we get an alpha from the one, and since it's off of the same, uh, it's off of the carbon on each of these rings that de denotes alpha and beta, then it's alpha for the glucose, beta for the fructose, and it goes from site one, carbon one, uh, to uh, this carbon two. So alpha comma beta, one to two. A little more involved, a little strange looking structure compared to the other ones, but uh, those three there give you the three uh, very different types of bonding.